Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies. Tonight, I'm gonna take Gallery's GHAD-68 airbrush. It's the one with the trigger. And I'm gonna put it through its paces with some uh, Tamiya's X18, I think it is, uh, semi-gloss black. I got a 0.5 millimeter tip in it, which is way bigger than I would wanna use for what I'm gonna do, but I wanna see how this sprays this semi-gloss black on a spoon and on some of the interior so stick around because this is going to be good all right like i said x18 semi-gloss black um we're gonna have some tamiya's paint retarder and tamiya's x-20a thinner we're going to use two not two but we're going to use three pipettes uh mini solo cup and i've started putting the solo cup in a uh tamiya's spray can cap so it doesn't fall over anymore i'm tired of spilling paint on my thing and we're going to use a couple of spoons as a test for uh just to see how the airbrush works with the how i got it thinned i'd rather test it on that than test it on the uh uh, the the kit itself so let's mix up some paint here we're going to start out by getting uh three i think i use three pipettes of semi-gloss black squirt it right into the mini soil cup i got those on amazon for dirt cheap i think there was 500 of them in the box that came and as you can see in the left hand corner i use a lot of them <laughs> so okay we got our our paint uh, bottle capped so i don't spill it all over the place now we're going to use the uh, retarder and that stinking washer gives me trouble all the time i don't know if you have the retarder if your uh, washer comes off every time you use it like mine does <laughs> but it's a little frustrating so now we're going to put 10 drops in here with three pipettes, I usually use about 10 drops. Um, my basement is pretty dry. I think I'm right at like 50% humidity, 53% humidity right around there. So I like to use a little extra. Now we're going to add thinner to it. And don't ask me my mix because I do it um, by eye every time. Because like I said, it changes with humidity changes with the paint because I do paint out of the bottles and uh, my paint might be a little thicker a little thinner depending on how long I've been painting out of the bottle so we're getting close I'm going to add just a little bit not even a full pipette I'll stir it up when you stir in it make sure you're squeezing the pipette a little bit too like I did here and what that does is that'll make sure that the paint inside the pipette is the same consistency as outside so you don't accidentally put thicker paint in your airbrush when you first start spraying like I've done before. So now I'm getting real close here. You can see it's pretty thin. Um, I'm happy with that. We're going to get that pipette I saved. We're going to get the thinner out the way. I'm going to grab a used um, spoon here. But when I test it, I always put maybe, I don't know, four or five drops in. I don't really go gung-ho putting the paint in the airbrush just in case I don't like the consistency. I can always suck it out real easy. So now I'm doing a real light coat, and look at how nice that's spraying out of there. Um, it's amazing how this jet, this new jet that Gallery designed, will spray a pattern. Watch on this, this white spoon here. Right now, I'm just blowing it off with air, and here we go. Look at how nice that paint atomizes. It's it's crazy how nice that is. Look at that. And I'll be honest with you, I stink at airbrushing. I will all, I will admit that right off the rip. Uh, it's still voodoo to me, but I'm with these airbrushes, I've been getting some great results. So now we're going to go the second coat, and I still like to do a thinner coat. Um, with the second coat, I did get a little heavy at the end there, 
and now I'm rolling it up the other way. Still a second coat, still pretty thin. And I'm going to hit it with air. And I am happy with the way that looks. That is, it, the light is making it look a lot more uneven than it looks in person, to be honest with you. Because it looked great. Now we're going to hit up our bench seat. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good healthy dose of, of paint in the, in the paint cup. And uh, we're going to do a light, light coat like I did on that spoon. So I'm still playing here. Now look, I'm going to give this a pretty decent shot. I figured it had enough time to dry. Look at that. That is the bomb diggity in my book. <laughs> I am happy with that. Now I am going to blow it down just to, with air. You pull back on the trigger, you can feel it come to the stop before you start adding paint, which is really nice. And now I'm, I'm blowing out the inside real quick, and I'm just barely pulling back that trigger. I wanted to show everybody how, how nice that paint atomizes, and I figured on the, on the bench, just like that spoon, um, you can really see it. But this is the way I would paint normally. I'm not doing anything different, um, except for I'm using a bigger, a bigger needle than I would for small stuff like this. This number five I'd use for painting the car body, but I wanted to, to just see how nice I could, I want to show everybody how nice that 0.5 atomizes and how nice this airbrush sprays um, with the 0.5. And it's a decent size decent sized seat so it shows it off pretty good but now by the time that I got done with the back the front coat was already done so we're going to put another light coat on all the way around and this is this is kind of like a primer coat because I don't prime my when I'm using this Tammy acrylic I, I quit priming I had way too many problems with primers and paints and just things going wrong um, and I found that when you let the paint dry for a couple of days, which I usually do, it's rock hard on there and it, it doesn't scratch. Uh, it's just like it's been primed. Uh, but it, it does do a great job. That's, I'm really loving the acrylic paint. And now I'm starting to learn how to mix a little bit better too, to get different colors that I want. So it's all working out good for me. And here I'm just blow drying it a little bit to get it. Uh, I was thinking about hitting it again, but I realized I had a little bit too thick of a coat on it. So I'm going to just put it off to the side and let it dry. Uh, but you can see it's covering really nice. And here's the grill. And again, I'm going to hit it with a, a coat going one way. Real light. We're going to get the edges real good. All the way around. And this thing just, I'm hardly pulling that trigger back at all. I'm really holding back on it to keep it from just blasting the paint. Now I'm going to give it a good shot here. Um, working my way up, I'm watching the paint hit the, the body of it so I know where my line is and keeping my wet line. Little tiny bit of overlap. Now I'm hitting it with just air. So I'm happy with that, except for right there. And now I'm going to go over it again because the ridges will keep it from pulling. Uh, I wouldn't do that on a car body for sure. So here we go with the dash. Same thing, blow it down with air just to get the dust out. And I'm going to come in real light, just like I did. And this thing sprays so smooth. It's not even funny. Look at how light of a coat you can put on there. And at the end here, when I'm done with all this, I'm going to grab that spoon again, and I'm going to blast it so you can see how thick of a coat you can really do when you, when you pull that trigger back to the stop. So I'm happy here. I'm really doing good. It's drying because my basement, is the humidity is so low, it's drying quick. So I'll be able to get right on it here with the second coat across the bottom, and I'm just going to walk it across. Just so smooth. And I love how 
that airbrush feels in my hand. I mean, it's just beautiful. Now, you see, I just did the angles. That was so I could blow that paint into the, to the gauge holes. Now, here's a little bit of an awkward paint because there's so many different... There's a couple of ledges, there's a couple of breaks and things like that. And to try to get it even is difficult, especially with the 0.5. And to be honest with you, with this one, I would have rather used the uh, regular style, the Gallery GHAC 98 with a 0.38 millimeter tip on it. Um, for some reason, with the fine little pieces like this that have all the nooks and crannies, it's easier for me to hold it like a pencil and use that one. But for the big bodies and things like that, man, you can't beat having that trigger finger. It <laughs> just... I'm, I, I can't describe it enough of how just nice and it feels in your hand. So any, everybody asked me, do you really need two different airbrushes? Absolutely not. Do you want two different kinds of airbrushes? I would say yes, just because of the way things paint. And I've, I've never had a trigger finger um, airbrush like this, a swallowtail like this. But I am telling you, now that I have, I don't ever want to not have one. So now we're coming into where I'm going to be doing a, a heavier coat. And we're going to lay some paint down. So I loaded it up. I know this .5 will suck it down pretty good. And look at that, lay it down. So smooth. And yeah, there's other airbrushes out there. But you know what? For the price point on these things and how easy it is to clean, and how nice of a pattern I'm getting out of it, I, I wouldn't want anything else. I love these airbrushes. So look at that. I mean, you can see the pattern, um, and you can also see how it atomizes by the, the overspray around it. Now, I didn't want this thing to be perfectly smooth, flat color. I wanted to have a little bit of shading in there. The rest of it I'm going to lay down to where... It's smooth. Now look at on these small parts. You can see that where the spray comes out and how fine the atomization is in this. If that's even a word. <laughs> but I am loving it. Um, it's just so easy to use and so easy to get great results. You know, I've, I've been buying some of the cheaper ones and using the cheaper ones and yeah, they do an okay job, and I, I always thought they were doing a great job until I grabbed this thing, and now I realize that, man, I can really do, I can, there's a lot of room for improvement, and I am improving every time I use it, but just the airbrush alone was a game changer for the way some of my, my stuff comes out. Now watch here, I am going to unload on this thing. It looks great, I just wanted to show you how much I'm, how much paint you can dump here real quick. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> it's, I'm pulling the trigger all the way back right now. And that really came out a lot of paint. <laughs> so, it, I mean, look at how smooth that is. If that was gloss black, you could walk away proud with that. I am happy. So now we're going to go into cleaning. If you If you just wanted to watch me paint, you can jump off right now, but we only got maybe 10 minutes worth of cleaning this thing up, and you can see how easy it is to tear down. Um, I like to suck the paint out of the cup with a pipette. Uh, it gets a lot of paint out of there, and I don't feel like I'm wasting a whole lot because I do recycle my paint. Um, as you can see right here, it's I, I've been doing it forever. You know, there's there's pros and cons with it. Yeah, I know I'm putting the retarder right in there. I'm putting thinner in there and everything. But again, I paint with an open bottle. So as I have the bottle open, and I know I shouldn't be using the cap as a as a paint pot, but but I do. So as I'm using the cap as a paint pot, I am the paint in the bottle is drying out a little bit. So you know, it's it's kind of a payback. Or pay off. And I got paint on my hand. I did so good until the end. 
So I'm going to clean myself up. We're going to get that bottle out of the way. Get the tools in. Now that's that, the, in the middle there, remember that black is the uh, spray can lid from a Tamiya's uh, rattle can. And it's just, I've dumped four or five of those stinking solo cups on there to where with a pipette it just flips over even with pain in there. And I just say some bad words that I shouldn't ever say. And it takes 10, 15 minutes to clean up and all that. And that was just, it's a nice way to not spill paint all over the table. So right now I just put a little bit of my airbrush cleaner right in on an old rag. And I'm going to use that to wipe out the cup. Uh, before I even start cleaning, I'll, I'll wipe out the cup. And the other thing, all these um, gallery brushes, the uh, GHA D9068 uh, and the, the GHA C98, or 96, I'm sorry, come with a quick disconnect on them. So if you have a quick disconnect on your hose, you just pop it right in there. And uh, what's nice with that is it's almost like a swivel when I'm cleaning up. You'll watch, I can spin that thing around, you know, and it doesn't twist up the hose. So here I put some thinner in the uh, uh, the Solo cup. I'm going to put a few drops. I don't fill the cup up, but I'm going to put a few drops into the cup, and then I'm going to put my finger over the edge, and I'm going to pull back just a little bit on the trigger to start pushing the air back across all the paint and it helped break it up and loosen it up for when I blow it out. Now I'm going to take my uh, paint cup or my paint can or cleaner, whatever they call them, and I'm going to blow that into it. And you'll see every once in a while I'll be pulling the finger back and forth with the trigger just to loosen that up that's on, you know, making all the parts move. So I'm getting that thinner wrapped around everything. Now we're going to do it one more time, just with a couple. You see, I don't have to put a lot of that in there. You really don't need it. And look at that's pretty clear right now. You don't see a whole lot of that black in there. There is some in there, but not a whole lot, and it's really diluted. So I'm going to blow that out of there all the way, and then we can start tearing this down. But you see, I'm, I'll, I'll work my finger here a couple of times just to uh, work that paint around the needle, uh, pull the needle back and forth a little bit, just to help move. And look at this. There's nothing on there. So it, that airbrush cleaner, I really like that stuff. Uh, it's not super expensive, so and it lasts a long time. You don't need a whole lot of it. And you'll see, even that little bit that I put in the Solo Cup, I'm going to put back in my mini mason jar. So, thank you again, Paul, for the mini mason jar. I used your sand in a diorama, so I'm using the mason jar for cleanup. <laughs> now let's tear this thing down. It doesn't have to be tight. It's super duper tight. Take off the, the cover. And now I can see the needle. I pull the needle back out of the way. And I'll take off the, the jet cap and the jet. And I'm going to push the needle forward instead of pulling it backwards. And that keeps all the paint that's on the needle from dragging up through the O-ring in the back and through the mechanism and everything. And I'm going to wipe the needle off with that uh, paper towel that I put some of the airbrush cleaner on. And I just pull it through there two, three times. Be careful you don't bend your needle doing this. Uh, be careful you don't stab yourself in the finger doing it. Uh, but that's all it takes to clean a needle. And I'm telling you, I, I actually asked Gallery if they polish the needles when they send them. Because I looked at that thing with my strongest uh, magnifying glasses on my visor. And it looks like it's polished. So they say that's the process that they use. Um, when they manufacture it, they didn't really say, yes, we, we, uh, polish it, but dang it, it is smooth as glass. And I'm, I'm always afraid of, if I try to polish it, of, uh, messing up the angle on the needle or, or stuff like that. So I never do polish mine and you saw the results. You can't get any better than that. 
So now I pulled the cap off, wiped it down. I got my little cleaning tools here. All right, now I realize that I need a little bit more uh, thinner in my mason jar because I like to flush things out, and I, I'd rather have it in the mason jar than try to work it out of that big bottle. But that airbrush cleaner, I really like this stuff. Get it on Amazon. Um, I get a lot of my stuff off of Amazon because there's really no hobby shops in my area. So, you know, it's just the way it is. If I had a local, I'd be there more often. Um, but I don't. So right now I'm just taking my largest bristle brush and cleaning out the uh, underneath the cup. And I'm taking my smallest one. Now I'm going to put it in here, but I watch so I don't go past the O-ring in the back. There's no sense in, in sanding my O-ring. So I just come in across where all the paint is, come up to that O-ring, and then pull back out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush it out from the from the cup side out and just push all the anything that's in there right out and get rid of it. This thing cleans up like a dream. I don't I don't know if it's the way it's treated, how the chrome that they do on it, but it just seems like it cleans so nice for me. A um, couple of Q-tips, five minutes, you know, and I could be painting this or painting four or five different colors and I get the same results. It, it, it just does not take long to clean up at all. So I'm loving these brushes. Uh, Gallery has really, I mean, they have they have field gold this one because it is just, it's a nice, nice, nice airbrush. Now I'm just out of out of folk or out of screen. Of course, I just wiped it off. Um, made sure it's good. We're gonna put the lid on that and get it out of the way. Uh, just so I don't bump it and knock it over while I'm doing the rest. Uh, I'm going to use my tweezers. I like these bent tweezers to grab this stuff. Uh, get a hold of it and give it a shake. I, I grab the uh, jet cap. And now I'm just going to use a Q-tip. Do a quick cleaning up and down. Wipe anything off that's on there, which there usually isn't anything really. But... What I'll do now is I'll take the pipette, squeeze up some, and I'm going to put it inside, and I'm going to push it right through that little nozzle. And two or three times just to to get everything out make sure. I'm going to dry it off, and I'm going to throw it in my little, my little hospital bin here so I don't lose it and end up in the carpet monster or underneath my filter. I've had that <laughs> happen before. Uh, cheap homemade, all that is is a, uh, a plastic Home Depot tote that I cut and put a, a bathroom fan in and uh, a filter case on the front. I got a video for how I made it, if you want to see. But now I'm doing the, the uh, little protector. The, I, I don't know what they really call it. I always call it a needle protector. And... With as little as I painted, there's not going to be anything on that thing. It will build up a little bit, but I've never had it build up a whole lot. Even painting a lot, it, it hasn't built up. I was impressed with that. My old one would, no matter what I would do, would start building up to where I would have to take it off and clean it even. And I think that's just the way the paint was coming out of it, was coming out on a wider angle and hitting it. So now this is my little reamer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this in my cleaner. I'm going to just set the jet on it, and I'm not pulling back. I'm just running it across my finger just to get any paint that's stuck on there unstuck. And now I'm going to take it with the pointy side up, and I'm going to put my pipette on there and get a good seal pushed on pretty hard, and I'm going to squirt that all the other way backwards through that jet and uh, knocks all the paint out that would have been loosened up with the reamer. And it does it, that little reamer with a little bit. And I, like I said, I'm not really reaming it out. I'm just loosening the paint up is all. So we'll put the jet on. Now I'm going to put the jet cap on. 
And make sure this goes on nice. You don't need to jam it. If it feels like it's jamming at all or it's tight, stop and look at what you're doing. Put the needle cover on or the protector on. Now I'll drop the needle in. Be careful with this so you don't bend that tip. Push it down. You'll feel it go through the O-ring and then come up and hit the stop. You don't have to jam it in there. Once it makes contact, you're done. That's good enough. We'll put the back on. We got the cup on. And we are done. Uh, I like to do one more thing here. I'm going to wipe this off real good. To uh, just make sure there's no paint left on it. Get my stuff out of the way here. And, uh, like I said, I'll wipe it down one more time just to get all the, 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 um, uh, cleaner off of it. But I love this airbrush. It is really a fantastic piece of equipment. Now I'll do this one more time. I'll take the pipette and I'll just put uh, two, three, four drops in there. And uh, I will spray that out just to get rid of any of the airbrush cleaner. Push it out for next time in case I don't run anything through it first. Before I put paint in there, I don't have airbrush cleaner in there that'll jerk up my, my uh, finish. Wipe it down one more time. Take a good look at it. Give it a kiss. <laughs> put it to bed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got anything out of this. Y'all have a great night and a better tomorrow.